PyCharm ID. What I have here, I already have a project. So I have created a project with name factorial where I'm supposed to write a code to calculate a factorial of a number. So we'll, we'll consider one fixed number and we'll uh, try to write a factorial code so that uh, we end up calculating factorial of that number. And we'll also debug the same program through a PyCharm code. So let us write a small Python uh, code snippet which would calculate the factorial of a number. So what we will do is let us define a small method so which will calculate a factorial. So to this we'll provide a variable number whose factorial my function gonna return. So let us write a code to calculate the factorial of a number here. So what one here and mm, is equal to temp fair into i because our i values are iterating from number to zero and once we are done with this we can return the value temp fair so this i think we don't need a semicolons and even putting semi semicolons wouldn't make any, any difference here so that's our method there. Now we can uh, directly take number from a user. Let us do one thing. We'll take a number from a user. We'll say uh, num is equal to input. We'll put a small dialog here. then we'll take it and what we will do is we'll print and we'll directly call the method factorial here factorial of number okay so if this is a program now what we will do is we'll not run the program uh, even if we, if this program has some internal uh, bugs within that we'll try to figure out what exactly are bugs in this program if it has if not we'll be at least able to go through the, the chain of execution where we will be able to explore variables in life so without executing that we'll debug that and we all know that whenever we want to debug especially all ideas or any debuggers or for any languages they come with a concept called as breakpoint so breakpoint is nothing but a point at which your flow of execution stops for you to review and upon you step from that breakpoint, you will be executing the instruction at that breakpoint location. So what we'll do is we'll just put a breakpoint where we want our execution to stop so that we can uh, check the value here. So I want to check the value here before I return the variable. So I'll just, so I'm placing my cursor here and I'll click on that. The appearance of red circle indicates that there is a breakpoint over there. And uh, this statement would always, uh, execute after loop and but at the same time I also want to see what are the variables when my loop executes. So I'll put two breakpoints here and uh, what else I'll do is uh, okay I think the, that's fine so we'll, we'll keep two breakpoints here anyhow we are just printing the, the numbers here okay so let us execute so now before we execute let us save these contents of uh, the script py, factorial.py and now instead of clicking on run factorial what i'll be doing is i'll click on debug factorial or either you can click debug and select a proper script which you want to execute so i'll click on debug factorial now you can see that the moment i have uh, clicked the number here it is asking me to enter number because this is the first line to start so i'll enter a number uh, let's say i'll enter 5 and we all know that the 5 factorial is 125 and after entering 5 you can see that my console now directly went into debugging mode earlier i had entered input here in the console but did it print the value of a factorial no yet why because my program paused at this point so when when i pause my program at this point what i have are the following variables so let me remove this this is a redundant uh, watch variable which i had from the earlier session so these are the variables during the debug sessions now you can see that the value of i is 5 because the num 5 was entered here and the range starts from 5 and if I execute this loop if my this expression is right you should see the value of i dropping from 5 
to 1. 0 is always exclusive. So this minus indicates stepping and at the same time I want temp to have the value of multiplication of variables. So let me execute one by one. So now I'm at this breakpoint. So now my uh, uh, what I am supposed to do is I want to move ahead from here. So this process is called stepping. So we basically have multiple step processes. One is called a step over which uh, lets me directly move to the next breakpoint and we have other stepping uh, 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 functionalities which we call them as step into and step out. Step into is used for uh, a, a breakpoint where we have a function call. And suppose I want to debug the function call and the code within that function, I would always click on step into. And when whenever you are debugging the functions and uh, for a moment if you find you, you would no longer want to debug the method but you want to come out of that method and, and execute the usual function call as it is, you would click on step out. So step into and step out are used to enter into a method and from where you want to further uh, debug deep down into a method called ch chain. Right now I don't want to do that, I just want to step uh, step over from breakpoint to breakpoint. A easy shortcut is F8. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually pressing F8 to move to the next breakpoint. So here I'm going to press F8. Yes, I have pressed an F8. You can see that the temp has executed. This line has executed. The breakpoint was here. It got executed. Since I clicked on step over, the breakpoint executed. It went the further subsequent instruction it is supposed to execute, which is the loop iteration. Now you can see that once again it is stuck at that. You can see that I value is 5. And if I execute once again, you can see that I values is just dropping and you can see that if I further execute this, you should find the temporary variables properly incrementing. So now it is 20. Yes. So my assumption is right here. Temp into temp uh, into I where I value is gradually dropping from 5 to 1. So I'm just clicking F8 and I'll see if I'll be ever coming out of this loop. Okay. 120. Yes. I'm 1. I'm back. I'm at the return statement because now I have exceeded the for loop iterations. And now when I click on F8, I'll be coming out of this function and probably you should see the print of the factorial. So before I click on F8, let me check what output I have. I don't have any output on console. So one now I'm back to my debugging console and I'm going to hit F8 for last time. Okay. I'm at this point. So now when I click further, yes, I have completed my debug execution. And when you switch to console, you should see the factor less 120. So this is how we generally debug a Python script. And what is more important here is to make sure you uh, the choice of breakpoint should be very meticulously done. So properly uh, placed breakpoints will let you debug the code script more effectively than improperly placed breakpoints. Show you a small concept called as watch and evaluate expressions. So this was our earlier code. Let me do one thing. Let me debug the code once again. So I'll enter a number. This time I'll enter, let's say, I'll enter 3. So after entering that, I'm on a debug console. Now you can click F8 to move, so on to move. But remember, sometimes I have these variables and sometimes I want to specifically choose a variable and make sure I, I specifically watch that variable. So that functionality is given to me with the help of a window called as watch variable. So he so I want to watch tempware. So even this you can do that. So it, it, it keeps on uh, showing you the value of this. But generally what I prefer is we can also evaluate expression in, in ahead. So if you see here right now the tempware is 1. I can dynamically even modify the temporary variable with the help of uh, watch uh, ex evaluate expression. So if I say temp var is equal to temp var plus 10 and if I hit enter it automatically evaluates that expression and you can see that the value of temp var is set to 21 because I have evaluated a evaluate expression. So what evaluate, ex evaluate expressions give you? They let you dynamically modify the value of a variable. So sometimes you can even modify the value of a variable with the help of watch variable as well. For example, i is equal to 3. I want to set i equal to, uh, let's say I want to set i equal to uh, 5. So I can even do this. If I set i equal to 5, you can also say that with when, when I'm able to enter the watch variable window, 
through watch variable also i was able to set here but basically what i am doing is i am i'm uh, i'm going uh, doing some kind of evaluate expression kind of stuff here so this watch and evaluate these are two functionalities which let you uh, deep, deeply observe the value of variable at the same time also observe some of the changes that variable could result into uh, some some other variable with the help of eval evaluation of expressions as well so now if i continue further you will randomly find some different result because i have dynamically set a different variable so let me process this you can see that now it is not calculating factorial because i have dynamically changed the all the variables so though we have entered three, I am getting this because I had modified the values of i and temp in dynamic. So this was watch and evaluate.